Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So today by popular demand, we are gonna walk through all of the photography settings that I have set up for my Canon R3. Now I've already done an entire video on all of my video settings and a super in-depth video on all of my autofocus settings. I can link those all below so you can check those out if you want. So let's go ahead and dive into the menus and I wanna show you how I have the R3 set up for photos. So just diving into the menus here, into the shooting menu first, I have my JPEG and HEF quality set up here. I don't actually use this at all, but this is how I have it set up. And then my image type is set to raw. I never use the compressed raw. Um, and I typically don't even have JPEGs turned on as well. I basically just have the camera set up to record raw stills, not compressed raw or double with JPEG or anything. I just use basic raw. And then cropping aspect ratio, I have this typically on full. Every once in a while, I will switch this over to like a 16 by nine aspect ratio if I'm trying to shoot a thumbnail for this YouTube channel. And I wanna specifically have those guidelines to know how that thumbnail is gonna look. Basically, if you set this to like 16 by nine, this is just gonna put those little bars up at the top of the um, screen. So you can see that's a 16 by nine crop. This is what it looks like if it's a four by three crop. But basically this is just frame lines to show you when you're shooting what it's actually gonna look like in post. Just a little piece of trivia here. If you actually set up the camera this way and then you import the images into Lightroom, it'll actually already apply a crop for you, which is kind of super convenient. Because you're shooting in RAW, you still have access to the entire photo. So if you click on the crop, it'll actually expand the entire photo and you can see everything. But if you know you're gonna be shooting for a very specific aspect ratio and you want Lightroom to already crop it that way, this is a nice way to do that. And then depending on how you want to have the setup, again, I have the setup to the outline. So it just shows me those little masking lines. Um, if you want to have the entire frame masked out where you can't see anything other than what's actually within those frame windows, you can do that. I prefer to be able to see everything. So that's how I have it set up personally. All right, moving on to the next menu here. I have my exposure comp just set to normal. Again, I shoot manual mode, so it doesn't really matter. Um, ISO speed settings, currently I have it set to 1600 because that's what I was shooting at. Um, I don't really change these. I just leave my speed range set to the full speed range. Um, I never let this go up into the high ISOs. Um, I just leave it set to normal. The auto range, I don't use auto ISO on this camera, but so I just, I don't think I've even changed that. I think that's how it comes uh, factory. And then minimum shutter speed, I have it set to auto. I could, you could change this if you want to. Again, I don't use this camera in auto mode and so I don't really have that set up. But if you wanna have it in auto mode and you wanted to define a minimum shutter speed, that's how you would do that. HDR settings, I have all of those turned off. My auto lighting optimizer, that's turned off because I'm shooting in manual mode. Highlight tone priority, that's off as well. Moving to the next menu, I have my anti-flicker shooting turned off. Now I will actually turn this on if I'm shooting events in a space where there's fluorescent lighting or LED lighting that could be flickering. Um, I'll show you there's a setting later that I have so it'll let me know if it's detecting the flicker. Um, I have this turned off currently, but if I am in a situation where I'm seeing that flicker, this is a nice way to turn that on so that the camera basically shoots around the flicker and then you won't have images where the lights are dimming and flashing and all that. Typically have this just turned off and then I will turn it on if I'm in a situation where flicker is a problem. High frequency anti-flicker shooting, I also have this turned off, but again, I will use this in events and weddings where I'm shooting in a situation where all that flicker is happening. This is honestly a really cool mode because you can literally go in and have the camera automatically detect the actual frequency of the flicker and then set the shutter speed to specifically shoot at that flicker so you have no flicker in your shots. Again, I have this turned off typically, but if I'm shooting an event where that's happening and I'm noticing that flicker, I will go in and mess with those settings. In terms of external speed light control, I don't mess with this much. I don't use a lot of external flashes unless I'm shooting in a very dark environment at an event. Um, but this is how I typically have it set up here. Just kind of scroll through these settings. I don't think I've actually gone through this menu um, at all, but um, that's, how, that's how little I use external flash. Uh, metering mode, I typically have this on evaluative metering. I don't usually stop this down into like partial or spot. I typically just leave that on evaluative metering and we're good to go. Moving on, I have my white balance currently set to auto. Now I will change this quite a bit. White balance is one of the things I think as a photographer that you change probably the most other than your basic shutter speed, ISO and aperture. In terms of setting my custom white balance, I don't do this a lot. I haven't been in a lot of situations where I've needed to change that. In terms of the white balance shift and bracket, um, I do use the shift quite a bit. For instance, if I'm shooting with like an ND filter on the camera and I know that there's like a green tint, I might bump that a little bit more towards magenta to compensate for that. Or if I'm in a situation where the, the white balance is just airing on one side and I kind of want to correct that, or if I'm trying to match another camera, I will use that. I typically don't use the white balance bracketing. Um, it's a cool feature. You can look into that if you're interested in that, but typically was shooting in RAW, that doesn't really matter. This would really just affect the preview you see on the back of the camera. 
My color space is set to sRGB. Picture style is currently set to auto. Um, again, this just affects the preview image that you see on the camera. This is not gonna affect anything in Lightroom or in your editor of choice. And so I typically just leave this on auto. Sometimes I'll change it to standard or something if I really feel like I have the need to do that. But typically I'm shooting in raw, so I just leave that on auto. Clarity, I leave normal and then lens aberration correction. I actually have this turned on because I'm using the RF 28 to 70 lens and it does a good job with this lens. Sometimes you do have to turn this off because it'll actually create some weird rings on the images when you're shooting with like a Sigma lens or something. Um, but for this RF lens, I have that turned on. Moving to the next menu, I have all of my noise reduction settings turned off completely. I wanna do noise reduction myself in post and not have the camera do that just because I wanna have more control over that. So my long exposure noise reduction is turned off. My high ISO speed noise reduction is turned off. And then I haven't messed with the dust delete data at all. Um, currently multiple exposure is turned off. That would just be turned on if you wanted to do multiple exposures. Focus bracketing, I have that turned off, but it's a very cool feature in the camera. If you haven't looked into that, absolutely do. You can set up some really cool stuff. I've messed with this quite a bit, um, or you can have the camera do all of the focus bracketing for you. Um, so if you're doing product shots and you need to have effectively zero depth of field where everything's in focus, or if you're doing landscape photography or real estate photography and you wanna have the camera do all the focus bracketing for you, it's super, super smooth. It's super, super accurate, and it does a really good job. If you're interested in how that works, I can totally make a video on that. Let me know in the comments. But currently that's turned off. Panning assist is off. Um, my drive mode, I have that typically set to high speed continuous plus. Um, I've made a video on how I shoot photo and video at the same time. And a lot of that workflow is by shooting bursts of images. And so I want this camera to function very quickly. I want it to shoot photos very rapidly. And so typically I have the camera set to high speed continuous plus, which is the fastest mode that it can shoot on. My interval timer is turned off. My bulb timer is disabled. My silent shutter function is off. My shutter mode is mechanical. Now, sometimes I will switch my shutter mode to electronic if I need to be quiet in a specific environment, or if I just need the extra speed that comes with using the electronic shutter but typically I have it set to the mechanical shutter, honestly, partially because I do shoot on that high speed continuous mode and then mechanical shutter limits that to 12 frames a second. And I like that speed when I'm shooting. So that's partially why I have it on mechanical, but there's some other benefits to having a mechanical shutter set up as well. And I honestly just like hearing the camera click when I actually fire it rather than the completely silent shooting of the electronic shutter. So typically I have that set to mechanical. Release shutter without card. I have this turned off just because it's way too easy to forget to put a card in the camera, start clicking and not realize that you don't have have a card and you're not actually recording anything, even though there's a whole no card flashing sign on the screen. And so I just have that turned off just to make sure that if I don't notice that I can't actually start quote, quote, taking pictures without having a memory card in the camera. Now I do have my image stabilizer mode turned on. Um, I have this set for still photos to only stabilize the actual shot. This basically just only lets the camera use the IBIS when you're actually shooting a photo rather than trying to constantly stabilize things. It's just less work for the camera to do, which means better battery life overall. But I do have the image stabilizer mode turned on there. If you're the kind of person that likes to customize all the quick controls on the back of the camera, the customized quick controls is where you do that. I haven't really done that. I don't really use that menu a lot. The touch shutter, I have that disabled. Basically that means when you touch the back of the screen, it will take a picture. And I don't like to have that turned on because sometimes my finger bumps the back of the screen and I don't want the camera taking a photo just because I touched the back of the screen. Now, if you have the camera set up on a tripod and you're specifically trying to tap the screen to focus on something and take a picture, that would be where you would turn that setting on, but I have that turned off. My image review, I have that set to two seconds and I have the viewfinder display enabled, which basically just means the picture shows up in the viewfinder as well if you're looking through the viewfinder. If you want to turn that off and have the viewfinder function a little bit more like an optical viewfinder would where you wouldn't actually see the image in the viewfinder, but you'd see it in the back of the screen, you could turn that off. I like to have it on. I like to see the photos when I'm looking through the viewfinder and not have to pull my eye away from the camera to look at the screen. Personally, that's how I have it set up. High speed display is turned off just because of some of the other settings I have. My metering timer set to eight seconds. That's just the default that it came on. I haven't messed with that. And then the last page on the shooting menu, I have my display simulation set to exposure and depth of field. Basically the R3 will give you a depth of field preview live in the viewfinder when you're looking through things if you have this mode turned on. So not only will it give you the full exposure simulation and like darken the screen and brighten the screen as you change your shutter speed and your ISO and all that, but it'll also give you a depth of field preview live with within the viewfinder. This is super, super helpful if you're shooting anything with a tightened aperture and you wanna see all the things that are gonna be in focus. Traditionally on DSLRs and even on mirrorless cameras, what you see through the screen is actually with the aperture wide open. And so you're gonna have a whole creamy depth of field 
bokeh-y background. Even if your aperture is stopped all the way down, a cool feature on the R3 is that you can actually have a depth of field preview live in the viewfinder. So if you stop your aperture down and close that down, it's actually gonna bring the background into focus a little bit more to show you exactly what the image is gonna look like when you take it. It's just a cool feature, I like to have that on. The optical viewfinder simulation view assist, I have that turned off. It's an interesting function. Basically, it just makes the R3's viewfinder look a little bit more like an optical viewfinder so that when you change the shutter speed and everything, it doesn't actually change what you're seeing in the viewfinder. Now that's a disabled function for me because I've done some custom things on my viewfinder brightness, but if you wanna mess with that, it's kind of a cool feature. You could totally check that out. Shooting info display, that just literally allows you to determine what information you see on the back of the screen and in the viewfinder and all that. Um, the one thing I will mention is that I have my viewfinder vertical display turned off. Basically what this means is that the screen will effectively rotate the information when you flip the camera into portrait mode and basically show you all the information level. Um, I personally, I just don't like that coming from DSLRs and using DSLRs for so long. I like to have that information rotate with the screen. It's just the way that my eye sees it best. But if you want to have that vertical display change orientation with you, you can totally do that. It's a nice feature in the camera. Um, the one thing I did mention earlier about flicker detection is that I have this turned on so that the camera will flash on the screen if it's detecting a flicker. So then basically if the camera is detecting a flicker, it'll flash that on the screen for you and then you know, all right, I gotta pop into the menu and turn my flicker shooting on or set that frame rate to specifically match the flicker. Um, it's just a really helpful feature to have that let you know by flashing a little thing on the screen if it's detecting a flicker in the scene somewhere. Viewfinder display format, I have this set to display one. Display performance, I have it set to smooth, which basically means it's not going to ramp down the frames per second that's showing in the viewfinder. It's just going to give me a smoother display overall. Now that does use a little bit more battery, but personally that's worth it for me because I like that super smooth viewfinder readout. And then my auto power off temperature is set to high. I've never had an issue with the R3 actually overheating and turning off, but basically turning this to high just allows the camera to go a little bit longer when it's getting hot rather than shutting off as a precaution. It only shuts off when the camera desperately needs to shut off because it's too hot. Now, again, I haven't had the issue on the R3, but if you're having issues with the R3 turning off because it's overheating, make sure to switch that setting to high. You'll get some more life and performance out of the camera. So basically that's how I have the R3 set up for photography in all the settings that I use there. If you're interested in a deep dive on how I set up all of my autofocus settings for photography, I have an entire video where I dive into all those autofocus menus and give you all the information. That video will be linked right here. Feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Peace.